Numerical analysis. It's the branch of mathematics that deals with finding approximate solutions to problems that are difficult or impossible to solve exactly. It's like using your ruler to get a close enough answer for the circle's area. Numerical analysis is taking an equation and breaking it down into smaller, simpler pieces that a computer can understand. The computer then calculates an answer that's close enough to the real solution, even though it might not be exact. Here's a super simple explanation. Let's bake a cake, but you don't have a recipe that tells you the exact amount of ingredients to use. You want to make the perfect cake, but you have to figure out the right mix of ingredients by experimenting. Start with a guess. You start with a basic idea, maybe one cup of flour, one egg, a bit of sugar, and so on. Taste and adjust. After mixing your ingredients and baking a small sample, you taste it. It's not perfect, so maybe too dry. So you decide to add more milk. You bake another small sample with your new mix. This time it's better, but maybe now it's too sweet. You adjust again, maybe less sugar this time. You repeat this process of adjusting and tasting until you're happy with the result. Each time your adjustments get smaller because you're getting closer to the perfect cake. Just like in numerical analysis, you start with an initial guess, your first mix of ingredients, and iterated, made adjustments, based on the results, taste test. Eventually, you found a mix that was close enough to the perfect cake, even if it wasn't the exact perfect recipe from the start. Algebraic Geometry Algebraic geometry studies the connection between algebraic equations. These are equations involving variables and their various operations like addition, multiplication, and exponentiation, multiplying by a larger number. Think of equations like x to the second power plus y to the second power equals 1, representing a circle and geometric shapes. These are objects like lines, circles, curves, and surfaces that we visualize in space. Algebraic geometry asks questions about these shapes. What does the shape look like? Is it a circle, a line, or something more complex? Does it have any special properties like symmetry or holes? How can we use these shapes to solve problems? It's a way of using algebra to understand and analyze shapes, even though you might only be able to draw them with simple equations. Differential Equations In simple terms, a differential equation is an equation that relates to a function. This represents the thing you're interested in on a graph, like the position of your car, x, or the temperature of a cup of coffee, y, to its rate of change. It's a way of figuring out how something changes over time based on its current state. The equation is like a rule that tells you how much to add or subtract to the function's value based on its current rate of change. For the car, it could be its speed. For the coffee, how fast its temperature drops. By solving the equation, you can find the actual function that describes how the thing you're interested in changes over time. Mathematical Modeling it's about translating real-world situations into mathematical equations that can be analyzed and used to make predictions or understand the situation better, i.e. predicting the weather. Mathematical modeling involves creating a simplified version of real-life situations using math. You can use it if you have a problem or a situation you want to understand better, like how a disease spreads or how a population grows. Instead of dealing with all the messy details of real life, you break it down into mathematical equations and rules that capture the essential aspects of what's happening. For instance, if you're modeling the spread of a disease, you might create equations to represent factors like how contagious the disease is, how often people come into contact with each other, and how long it takes for someone to recover. By putting these equations together, you can simulate different scenarios and predict outcomes, like how quickly the disease will spread or what measures might help control it. Dynamical Systems Dynamical systems are a way of describing how things change over time, often using mathematical equations, like a pendulum swinging back and forth or a population of animals growing and shrinking. This helps you understand how these systems evolve or behave as time progresses. In a dynamical system, you have variables, things that are changing over time, for example, population, that represent the state of the system at any given time, and equations that describe how those variables change over time. These equations might depend on the current state of the system and possibly other factors like external forces or influences. 
One key idea in dynamical systems is the concept of attractors. These are states towards which the system tends to move over time, even if it starts from a different initial condition. For example, a pendulum might eventually settle down into a steady swinging motion, or a population might stabilize at a certain size. Dynamical systems can be simple, like the motion of a single pendulum, or incredibly complex, like the weather or the global economy. They're used in many fields from physics and engineering to biology and economics to understand and predict how systems change and evolve. Graph theory. Graph theory is like a map and guides us to understanding an intricate network. It's a branch of mathematics that delves into the connections between things, picturing them as dots, vertices, and the lines, edges, that link them. Let us consider for a moment a bustling city, a web of streets and avenues connecting its various landmarks. Think of these landmarks as important points in the city, buildings, parks, or intersections. The edges, then, represent the roads or pathways that allow you to travel between them. By studying these connections, graph theory can understand how connected things are. It lets us analyze how easily you can move from one point to another, considering different routes and potential traffic congestion, and solve problems efficiently. From finding the shortest route between two points to planning the most efficient way to visit all landmarks, graph theory offers valuable tools for optimization. Mathematical Statistics Mathematical statistics is a branch of mathematics that deals with the theoretical aspects of statistical methods and techniques. It focuses on developing mathematical models and frameworks to analyze and interpret data and draw conclusions about populations based on samples collected. It's essentially a toolbox with various tools to analyze and interpret data. It uses the power of mathematics to help researchers organize data. It helps summarize and arrange large amounts of information in a meaningful way, like calculating averages, ranges, and frequencies. Draw conclusions. By analyzing patterns and trends in the data, we can make informed inferences about the larger population the data represents. This is like concluding the entire city based on the information you gathered. Measure uncertainty. No data is perfect, so mathematical statistics helps us understand the potential margin of error in our conclusions and how reliable they are. Probability theory. Probability theory is the branch of mathematics that studies the likelihood of random events occurring. Probability theory helps us understand how likely each outcome is and how to predict the chances of different events happening. In simpler terms, it's like a way of measuring how often something is likely to happen based on all the possible options. Let's break it down even further, shall we? Within probability theory, there exists events. These are the things that can happen, like flipping a coin and getting heads or tails. Outcomes. These are all the possible results of an event, like heads or tails in the coin toss. And finally, probability. This is a number between 0 and 1 that tells you how likely an event is to happen. 0 means it's impossible, and 1 means it's certain. Think of it like this. If you flip a fair coin, there are two equally likely outcomes, heads and tails. So the probability of getting heads or tails is both 1 half, or 50%. Probability theory usually helps us with weather forecasting, as meteorologists use probability to predict the chance of rain, snow, or sunshine. Topology Topology is the branch of math that studies the properties of shapes and spaces that don't change when the object is stretched or deformed. The basic idea in topology is that shapes can be squished, twisted, or bent, but their topological properties remain the same. So, a square twisted into a circle is topologically equivalent. Some shapes are topologically equivalent, while geometrically different. For example, a square and a circle are topologically the same, both just have one whole, but geometrically different. So, topology ignores distances and measures, focusing only on the quality of properties like connectivity and boundaries. Matrix Algebra Matrix Algebra is like a special set of rules for playing with grids full of numbers. 
These grids are called matrices, that's the plural of matrix, and they're just rectangles filled with numbers in rows, the horizontal lines, and columns, the vertical lines. Here's how it works. Size of a matrix. This tells you how big the grid is. For example, a 3 by 2 matrix has 3 rows and 2 columns making a rectangular shape. Adding matrices. If you have two grids of the same size, you can add them together by adding the numbers that are in the same spot in each grid. Multiplying matrices. This is a bit trickier. To multiply two matrices, the number of columns in the first grid has to be the same as the number of rows in the second grid. There's a special way to do multiplication that involves combining the numbers from the rows of the first matrix with the columns of the second matrix. Identity matrix. This is a special grid where all the numbers are zero except for a line of ones that go diagonally from one corner to the other. When you multiply any matrix by this special one, you get the same matrix back, just like when you multiply a number by one. Matrix algebra helps us organize and solve problems with lots of numbers all at once, making it super useful for things like computer graphics, solving math problems, and even predicting the weather. Number theory. Number theory is the study of the properties and relationships of building blocks of mathematics. It goes deeper into the fascinating world of whole numbers. A simplified breakdown of the parts of this would be prime numbers. These are special numbers that can only be divided by one and themselves without leaving a remainder. They are like the fundamental ingredients in our number game. For example, 3, 5, 7, 11. Composite numbers. These are numbers that can be built by multiplying two smaller whole numbers. They are like the various structures you can create using the prime number building blocks. For example, 4, 6, 8, 10. Number theory explores divisibility rules and prime factorization. Divisibility rules is identifying patterns and properties that help us determine if a number is divisible by another number and prime factorization, breaking down composite numbers into their unique combination of prime factors, like figuring out the exact ingredients used to build a particular structure.